good afternoon respected colleagues and thank you for this opportunity to present this uh, topic the role of hemodynamic support in STEMI, when and how. Not every STEMI patient comes to us with, uh, who require hemodynamic support. So the indication for hemodynamic monitoring in STEMI, these are the indications like management of complicated acute MI, where to differentiate between hypovolemia versus cardiogenic shock, ventricular septal rupture versus acute MR, severe LV failure, RV failure, refractory ventricular tachycardia, difficulty in differentiating severe pulmonary disease from the ventricular failure with available non-invasive data, assessment of cardiac tamponade, and assessment of therapy also. So uh, as per the previous talk, cardiogenic shock in STEMI is a different ballgame. Now the recommendations for management of cardiogenic shock in STEMI are like that. The class one recommendations are immediate PCI, uh, in cardiogenic shock if coronary anatomy is feasible and uh, if not suitable then it is CABG. Invasive blood pressure monitoring with an arterial line is recommended. Immediate Doppler echo to, uh, for, to assess ventricular and valvular function, loading condition and to detect mechanical complications. And it is indicated that mechanical complications are treated as early as possible after discussion by the heart team. Oxygen mechanical respiratory support is indicated according to the blood gas. And fibrinolysis, uh, whenever possible, whenever primary PCI is not uh, available. Complete revascularization, again, already told, complete revascularization during the index procedure should be considered. The two-way indication, again, IABP, it should be considered in patient with hemodynamic instability, cardiogenic shock due to mechanical complication. Hemodynamic assessment with pulmonary artery catheter may be considered for confirming diagnosis for guiding therapy. Ultrafiltration may be considered in refractory congestion. Inotropes, vessel pressures are needed for hemodynamic stabilization. Short-term mechanical support may be considered in patient with refractory shock. And routine use of IABP is not indicated, class three. So this, this slide summarizes this talk. No shock, primary reperfusion. Impending shock, primary reperfusion, along with hemodynamic monitoring. Shock, LV unloading, then primary reperfusion. So the philosophy, there is a time to rethink. We are very keen about dot to balloon time less than 90 minutes. But dot to balloon time nine, less than 90 minutes is not associated with improved in-hospital mortality, especially in anterior wall MI and cardiogenic shock. Despite timely perfusion, 10% mortality in index hospitalization and 76% of those who survive progress to congestive heart failure in next five years. Myocardial reperfusion actually is a double-edged sword, according to the Dr. Bronwald also, ischemic reperfu ischemia reperfusion injury can lead to cardiomyocyte death. In crisp AMI trial, there is within one week of successful reperfusion, 40% LV injured quantified by CMR. So the myocardial perfusion is driven by several factors like coronary perfusion pressure versus ventricular filling pressure, myocardial oxygen supply versus demand. Reduction of myocardial injury is our utmost need. Only reperfusion could not meet the goal. Hence the concept came dot to unloading, but the trial occurred, that was a failed trial. But since that, the important things are circulatory support to increase mean arterial pressure so that we have increased urine output, decreased serum lactate, ventricular support to reduce LV pressure and volume so that we have reduced pulmonary capillary wage pressure, coronary perfusion to increase the transmyocardial perfusion to resolute STD changes or CKMB level. 